So we're going to have three presenters, and Jerry Cattell is going to be kicking us off. Jerry is a director of technology at a company up in Chicago. He's also a DevOps Days Chicago organizer. And Jerry came and hung out with us our first year, and I'm really happy to have Jerry back. And he's going to be presenting. Please welcome Jerry. Hey, so I'm here to uh, encourage you to start hiring more remote workers, but to do it responsibly. I worked remotely for about six years. I started because I went to work to a, went to a different city, started working, and uh, found out that city was not for me, decided to come back to Chicago, but they asked if I would start working remotely. But I was the first remote employee, so I went through lots of growing pains. Uh, but I think overall it really helped the company to have that experience, and we actually ended up getting to about 10% of the company. Now that company actually got acquired and then sold off to another person, and in those two adventures, I got to experience much larger companies and different feelings on remoteness. Uh, and then I decided, okay, I want something a bit smaller, and went fully distributed. And so that was yet a different experience. Now, my new job is actually I'm back in an office, and that's a, a new experience again after six years, but I am the only person who actually has a remote engineer reporting to me. So, first, the employee benefits of uh, working remotely, people tend, tend to think about like, hey, I'm on a beach working on a laptop. That's not really quite how it works. I've never done that. Um, it's much more subtle than that. It's much more, hey, I can go work at a coffee shop. I don't have to worry about a commute. I can hang out with my family a bit more. Or if I do want to work from another country, that's fine too. On the employer side, it's a bit more substantial. Uh, you actually get access to talent that you would never get access to otherwise. There are studies that have shown that remote employees are more productive because they don't have like all the just annoyances that come in the office of like bothering you. And then you tend to have retention, the retention rate is higher because they are generally happier. You can reduce your office costs if you have enough remote employees because you don't need the space. And we have actually found every place that it's been fewer sick days, and I'll get to that a little bit later, but... Uh, and then if you expand far enough, you can also cover like disaster recovery, 24-hour support across the, across the world, and having those diverse populations on your team can actually help you debug things a little bit better. So let's do it. Let's, let's, we found a great employee, let's hire her. And chances are if you do that, it's going to fail. Uh, if you just hire her, throw her off wherever she is, and start sending her work. It's, it's, if you do nothing else, it, there are a lot of obstacles in the way. First and foremost is uh, collaboration. That's hard if you're off over here and you don't know that person, and you don't know their personality, they don't know you. And then there's also, you have a manager who doesn't know you. They don't know if they should trust that you're doing work. And strangely, they don't trust you're doing enough work, and we often see people who work from home actually end up overworking and can kind of lead to burnout a little bit because they're trying to make up for that. So what do you do about that? First, you kind of have to get all the necessary equipment. No robot, no robot required. Uh, so the employee clear is to get an ergonomic setup, all those things. The office, I cannot mention this enough, good intercoms in all your conference rooms, ethernet in all your conference rooms, and just good areas to pair remotely. And then you need to get like a good VPN set up. Not everyone has one for whatever reason. Uh, chat, so you can have that all, all the time because that's gonna be your primary way of talking. Video conferencing, always have a link to the video conference and then some way of screen sharing. So then the question is, who is a remote worker? Um, I would say that it's actually anyone that can work away from the office for an extended period of time. So I would actually say that even if you're just telecommuting three days a week, four days a week, for an extended period of time, you're basically a remote worker. So I'd actually say, start with a local team. Like, have them work fully remote. Work out the kinks. And sort of have them solve the basic problems. If you have an employee that needs to move, them too. When you go to hire your first remote person, make sure you do it well, because that's gonna set the tone for all future ones. Make sure they have, they're good at written communication, they can code test, pair remotely with them, all those things in advance. Because really, that is gonna matter. And culture, people worry about how do you keep your culture, and I just have to say, keep them involved in the culture. Have them come visit the office often. Make sure you have an annual retreat. 
If there's a book club, like it was mentioned earlier, have them join into that. So, like I said, get the necessary equipment. Start with people you know first, because that sort of eliminates the personality part of it. Choose the first one, the remote long distance one, uh, carefully, and make sure they're included in your company culture so that that carries on through it. Uh, I proposed an open space for remote work back there if you want to ask me questions or just talk about things. And my company, Tempest, is hiring, though currently only in Chicago, though I'm working on changing that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jerry.